Франка, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, well, can you, I think you can see my screen now. You can see the screen. Maybe you could um, mm, switch yes. to full screen. S control L. But it doesn't control. work. Control L. Good. First uh, stop, then go back. Frank, I would like to say that it's very nice for me to see you again after big right. gap. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Thank you. You are more or less the same as before. Okay, full screen. Yeah, the same. Uh, okay, yes, but if I go full screen, I cannot share. <laughs> uh, Have you shared first share the screen? Yes. Okay, and now if you press, yes, right. Ah, yeah, I could now. <laughs> Eh, well, it is uh, non-commutative because uh, if you do the operation in a certain order, it works. Uh, in another one, it doesn't. So as usually, the non-commutative case is more complicated. Yes. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. So uh, this is our last lecture for today. And uh, Franco Fagnola is going to speak about dilations of classical diffusion processes via quantum stochastic calculus. Please, go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, join all those who thanked the organizers for this uh, um, perfectly uh, or, uh, well organized meeting and uh, uh, also for the um, creative ideas of having also coffee breaks, uh, excursions uh, in uh, this, uh, this online mode. And, uh, uh, well, um, the, the subject I'm talking about is uh, um, related to uh, the topic discussed uh, th this morning uh, by uh, Luigi. Um, so it is, uh, uh, if uh, you want, uh, uh, a special case uh, of uh, construction of uh, uh, certain quantum stochastic processes as uh, uh, homomorphies of uh, 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 von Neumann algebras, uh, but done through uh, the uh, extension of some classical uh, um, Markov semigroups, so semigroups on a, a space uh, of functions. Um, and then, uh, well, dilation, so uh, through quantum stochastic calculus, through uh, the uh, quantum stochastic calculus on boson Fox space that was uh, uh, introduced by uh, Robin Hudson and uh, K.R. Parthasarat. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the uh, outline of uh, uh, what I um, would like to present. Uh, the core is the uh, second and the second part. I think I will have only uh, time for a hint to the third uh, part. The first one has already been discussed by um, other speakers uh, uh, during uh, uh, the first part of the day. And, uh, uh, okay, but so anyway, the idea is that uh, one has, uh, uh, in the end, uh, several uh, problems of realization of uh, uh, quantum stochastic processes that can be uh, worked out uh, applying uh, um, semigroup theory in uh, uh, well all, well at any at any level but typically one has problems of generation of semigroups either um, in uh, in best spaces or in spaces of continuous functions when one wants to compare uh, uh, the extension the non-commutative extension to the uh, classical uh, semigroup. 
and uh, so in, a, in other words, the semigroup theory is the engine for uh, all these uh, uh, machinery. So, well, for, first of all, I would like to uh, recall uh, uh, this uh, uh, notion that has already been uh, discussed by it in this morning, but uh, this is only to make, uh, uh, well, a bit more familiar, perhaps my notation, nothing uh, more. So one has um, a, an, a, a von Neumann algebra, and here there is the Hilbert space because one should also think of a concrete realization of, of a subalgebra of, well, a strongly or weakly closed subalgebra of the algebra of all bounded operators on a Hilbert space. And one has a semigroup of uh, completely positive um, uh, maps, identity preserving. This uh, one is the identity operator. Well, completely po complete positivity has already been mentioned this morning. It means uh, uh, the following. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so that uh, when one tensorizes um, the uh, maps uh, on the algebra with uh, this matrix, n by n matrix algebra, and one considers this map, this map, uh, the semigroup at time t tensorized with the identity map on the matrix algebra is still positive, or in, uh, uh, well, a uh, matrix notation, one has this property. Uh, then uh, one asks some continuity property, as um, our chairman pointed out in the previous talk, the appropriate notion of continuity. Uh, in this case is the uh, uh, weak star continuity because, uh, uh, well, the von Neumann algebra is the dual of some Banach space. And so it is uh, the appropriate con uh, continuity in time. And uh, also uh, this um, continuity in, uh, the argument of uh, positive maps, so the normality. This is, of course, strong convergence of A alpha. But other uh, topologies can uh, be considered as well uh, if one uh, considers uh, smaller algebras or sister algebras, but here we remain in the framework of for Neumann algebra. But in the sequel, for the sake of concreteness, I will consider uh, the, al all the algebra of all bounded operator on the uh, given Hilbert space. And uh, the first result uh, that uh, has uh, been uh, already recalled uh, this morning is uh, the structure of generators of non-continuous semigroups, which is a uh, celebrated uh, theorems that was proved by uh, Gorini, Kosakowski, Sudarshan, and Lindblad in 76, that's why GKSL, uh, which says that uh, the generator, well, under non-continuity, the generator is uh, as this form for a uh, where these operators L and H are bounded, and the series is convergent in the strong operator topology. Well, the advantage of this representation is that uh, one uh, has to deal with uh, operate or think when trying to understand what is the action of the generator and then of the semigroup. One uh, thinks of uh, operators on the Hilbert space uh, instead of uh, maps on the Banach space. Therefore, uh, one has a simpler object. And uh, in the end, uh, all the properties, well, or, or 
that, that one would like to prove uh, for uh, the generator can be reduced to some properties of the uh, of these opera of these bounded operators in the uh, representation. This representation is not uh, unique. Uh, uh, well, and uh, by the way, there is a, a, a paper by um, uh, Robin Hudson and uh, uh, a student uh, of him studying non-uniqueness of this representation, but typically this non-uniqueness is not a problem um, because, uh, well, one can uh, think of some special representation. And usually in physical applications, there is always the best possible representation from the outset. Okay, uh, and uh, well, as uh, um, Professor Olevo told uh, this morning, uh, there is a, a natural extension of this uh, formula to the case where uh, the, uh, the operators L and H are unbounded. Um, it is no more a, ca a characterization of the generator or the semigroup, but uh, one starts from this remark, uh, well, that uh, one can write, uh, e, well, this GKSL form like this in the first line, uh, uh, in this way, in the, as in the third line. And uh, this uh, G is the generator of a contraction semigroup uh, because, uh, well, you see it is dissipative from this formula, it is obviously dissipative. And well, in the, of course, in the case when G is bounded, it is a uniformly continuous semigroup and so on. But this is the, uh, the starting point for the uh, relaxation of the assumptions. And uh, this um, is uh, the, uh, the, the, the assumption that was uh, used by um, in the construction of Feller, Cato, and uh, then uh, brought to the non commutative framework by Davis, in which one assumes that this opera the operator G generates now a strongly continuous, I forgot, contraction semigroup on uh, the Hilbert space. Uh, this, uh, these operators, the L's, are uh, um, less unbounded than, than, than G. They are in practice a square root of G, a sort of square root of G. And one has this uh, uh, assumption, uh, which is equivalent to the preservation, well, is equivalent, sorry, is a reminiscent for the moment of the preservation of the identity for the general, um, uh, well, for the Markov semigroup, because as Professor Oliver said this morning, uh, well, this condition, which is necessary and sufficient for preservation of the identity in the case where uh, G and L are bounded, in this case, it is no more necessary. But nevertheless, starting from these, uh, these assumptions, one constructs uh, the uh, semigroup on the von Neumann algebra. And uh, then, uh, uh, well, one can try to study whether this uh, extends a classical semi uh, semigroup on a function space or not. E, uh, okay, so the construction uh, goes, uh, uh, well, this is the theorem the result. So under these assumptions, the assumption I uh, listed here, these three assumptions, one can construct a quantum sub-Markov semigroup. So uh, one has a semigroup of completely positive maps. And the only assumption that is, uh, the only um, property that is missing 
in the final semigroup is preservation of the identity. One has only sub Markov, but it solves uh, the equation, this equation in the, um, in the weak, in the sense of quadratic forms. And uh, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, as I said, uh, one does not know a priori if uh, the formal preservation of the identity implies the preservation of the identity for the map of the semigroup. The const uh, well, the construction is uh, uh, a non-commutative version of the uh, Cato Feller uh, construction of the perturbation of a uh, generator. So one starts with, with from the semigroup generated by in this way with the sandwich P star T P T. This T zero is obviously a semigroup because one has the composition law. And then uh, inductively one adds uh, other pieces. In this way, one gets an increasing sequence of positive maps. Uh, each TN uh, for N bigger than zero is not a semigroup, but in the end, the limit turns out to be a semigroup. And uh, there is this uh, problem. Now, uh, this problem has been studied by uh, uh, several, several, uh, several authors in different contexts uh, uh, with different pro um, approaches. But uh, uh, um, in the end, uh, one, when one wants to check uh, this property in a, um, a model, uh, either one is lucky enough that the semigroup has a, a commutative restriction. So in this way, I mean by this, uh, that Tn of the identity operator is uh, something that commutes with the, uh, so, well, all these sequences of I Tn applied to identity are a family of commuting operators. And so in this way, one can deal with the, with this problem in the same way as in classical probability. Or uh, I think the uh, effective uh, condition is uh, this one, which is uh, inspired by a non-explosion condition for classical processes. It is, uh, for example, uh, it has been applied, for example, to birth and death processes. Uh, it, there is this condition for uh, diffusion processes in the book of Struck and Varadhan. And uh, I was introduced to this by, um, well, Alexander Mikhailovich Gotaryov, uh, uh, well, a long time ago. But it turns out to be, uh, well, effective in uh, uh, many cases. With this additional assumption uh, in the non-commutative case, that, um, uh, uh, well, in, says that this operator C, besides uh, playing the, the role of a sort of um, Lyapunov function that guarantees uh, that the process is not exploding, so not going to plus infinity in uh, finite time, controls also the unboundedness of the self-adjoint part uh, or symmetric part of G. But uh, this uh, is the algebraic part of the assumption. There are other. One should be able to compute this uh, quadratic form. And here there is a, a, a composition of unbounded operators. So one needs uh, an essential, a good essential domain for the operator G, the adjoint L and their adjoints and so on in such a way that one can do all the compositions. So, so here one needs uh, mm, essentially that compositions are well behaved. And uh, um, if one chooses this operator or a related one, so the, the 
symmetric part of G, often this uh, condition, this uh, non-explosion condition, can be uh, checked by showing that uh, these operators are, these commutators are unbounded at most as Lj and Lk, because the, the commutator is a product, so it should be, it looks like a square of L, but uh, since there are compensations, uh, as it happens with differential operators, it becomes more regular. You know. uh, okay, uh, so uh, this is the, uh, the problem I wanted to discuss that was introduced by uh, Luigi uh, this morning. The problem of uh, extensions of uh, classical Markov semigroups to quantum Markov semigroups. Uh, meant as uh, uh, weakly star continuous semigroups on a um, von Neumann algebra. So uh, if one has a, a classical Markov semigroup and uh, in order to match the two definitions, I am now considering also classical Markov semigroups as weak star continuous semigroups of positive maps on uh, some L infinity, uh, which often come from uh, uh, extensions of semigroups on uh, bounded continuous functions. Uh, uh, by uh, taking, uh, well, suprema, for example, if one has uh, macro semigroups defined by a kernel, uh, by integral against a kernel, one has this situation. And uh, uh, the extension should be uh, in such a way that uh, a multiplication of a function in, in L infinity uh, interpreted as a multiplication operator on this uh, space, on the bounded operators, bounded function becomes a bounded multiplication operator, uh, should be transformed by the quantum macro semigroup in this way, uh, in the multiplication operator by the same function transformed by the classical uh, semi group. And so, a, a problem that <clears throat> has been studied uh, a lot uh, in uh, quantum probability is uh, this problem given a Markov semi group on some L infinity. Uh, well, here there is a question mark missing, of course, whether one can um, construct a quantum Markov semigroup extending this semigroup. And uh, this can be done in several uh, cases. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I... Uh, and uh, uh, now uh, I would like to uh, discuss the case of, uh, uh, for example, of a diffusion process. Uh, and uh, discuss at least the algebraic part of the problem. So you, you, are, you are given the classical generator. Uh, now you have at your disposal the machinery of the minimal semigroup and so on for the construction of a Markov semigroup. And uh, well, uh, you want to see whether you can apply it to the extension of some classical generator. Uh, of course, uh, there are some um, tricks or some rules to uh, reproduce, uh, well, to solve the problem according to the type of the classical generator. There are some uh, uh, recipes to find uh, the L's and the DH for jump processes and uh, other for uh, uh, 
diffusion processes or for diffusion and diffusion and jumps which are quite natural and come from properties of uh, commutators so commutators act uh, on uh, uh, functions as uh, well by the Leibniz rule as differential operators and so uh, uh, well everything uh, uh, after the first guesses uh, it comes uh, out uh, in a natural way so uh, the problem is so given this generator how can I find the operator cell and H in such a way that uh, in the end I construct a quantum Markov semigroup with this property, where this T, uh, T not uh, Mascal, but the standard capital T, is the semigroup generated by A. And of course, there are some assumptions on sigma and B. But uh, for the moment, we concentrate only on the algebraic. Uh, uh, aspect of the problem well the first so the first remark uh, which is the in my opinion the most convenient way to proceed is to look for this uh, uh, formula uh, for the Limbladian so for the GKSL generator uh, well now mm, I see that I have not much time, but it is only an algebraic computation. It is not necessary to go through it. This formula reminds the classical formula of the Carré Duchamp. Because you see, you have the generator applied to a product minus uh, X star, um, well, minus X star generator, then so on. And this turns out to be the a sum of squares uh, the same happens when uh, you consider well i have not the yes when you consider the classical formula for the carré duchamp you have sigma square times a derivation and as you have seen this morning in uh, uh, luigi's uh, talk as we have seen this morning, when you compute this commutator, this sigma is just a multiplication operator by sigma, so it commutes with mf and it goes out of the commutator. The commutator of a derivative with respect to x and the multiplication is just multiplication by sigma f prime. And so in this way, if you want to reproduce, you see here in this formula, you have sigma square product of first derivative. Here you have the, this commutator and a joint. So the most natural choice is to choose uh, uh, as a differential operator, uh, well, as L, so the Krauss or noise operator in the GKSL form of the Limbladian this first order differential operator so where sigma is the covariance yes the covariance if you uh, choose this you get this formula by commutator computation so you see you have the multiplication by sigma square second derivative which was the second order part of the generator and then multiplication by something uh, a certain coefficient and first order part of the generator now here if sigma is invertible you can formally solve the equation and you get everything but sigma may vanish somewhere okay so in this case when sigma vanishes somewhere uh, you can use the, <coughs> the Hamiltonian, the commutator with the Hamiltonian that was here. Uh, let's go back. The commutator with the Hamiltonian that was here in the generator. 
Oops. Okay. Uh, because, of course, if uh, B is non-zero, where sigma is zero, you cannot solve this equation. So in this case, you use this commutator. So you add a first order differential operator, which is symmetric. Eta is another function. In this way, you get another relationship. So re remember, sigma is given, is the covariance of the diffusion process. B, B is the drift. And uh, uh, so rho is arbitrary, eta is arbitrary. So you have a lot of choices of eta and rho in such a way that you get the uh, generator of the classical diffusion process. And in this way, the operator uh, minus L star L, uh, divided by two becomes this second, this second order differential operator. And here there is a, the first problem with the semi-group generation because, uh, uh, well, it is clear that one has to ask uh, uh, some properties on sigma, the covariance matrix and uh, the eta and rho that appear here related with the drift in such a way that uh, one proves that G generates a contraction semigroup, that C, um, well, one can find a good essential domain for L, G, and other operators. Well, okay, and uh, but here there is the solution in the general D dimensional case. One has, uh, well, the same object. And the G is uh, this uh, operator for which one has to prove generation in L2, in L2 space, possibly with C infinity with, with compact support, which is an essential domain. Otherwise, uh, you are in trouble with the composition of operators. Uh, um, okay. And uh, well, um, a lot of time ago, uh, I uh, uh, solved this problem under uh, regularity assumptions on uh, sigmas, uh, so the covariance matrix of the diffusion and B. So here, there is the minimum possible number of bounded derivatives. If you uh, don't want to count, uh, this is uh, in practice infinity with bounded derivative. Because uh, when one has to prove gener uh, generation of semigroups, uh, there are of the, with generations, uh, generators of this type, one either has uh, uh, some ellipticity assumption on the covariance matrix or regularity. And I should say that uh, um, the techniques used in the uh, a fear and Kurtz book that was mentioned before are um, very uh, useful in this case because one can uh, go through all the steps and in the end construct a quantum Markov semigroup extending the classical diffusion semigroup uh, under these, uh, these assumptions. And the steps of the proof are uh, the following. First of all, one shows that G generates a C0 contraction semigroup in this space. One finds a good core on, to, in order to, uh, to be able to make all these compositions. Uh, as operator C controlling the unboundedness of all compositions and commutators here, one takes minus Laplacian plus identity, plus identity just to move away from zero the spectrum. Then one uh, proves uh, generation in the space of continuous function together with a good core. And uh, from all of this, one 
can follow all the steps. Of well, these are uh, somewhat, uh, um, I should say, not really optimal assumptions. One can relax uh, uh, boundedness on uh, sigma and b by uh, asking some uh, more regularity uh, or uh, one can allow b to be unbounded if sigma is more bounded uh, or well one can play and have some compensation of assumptions between sigma and b and so on but as it was uh, pointed out uh, uh, this morning that there, there is not a full theory even uh, in the one dimensional case as there is in the uh, classical case. And well, this is the alternative. If one assumes uh, a uniform ellipticity on, uh, oh, sorry, this is not sigma, I'm sorry. So this is not sigma. This is sigma, sigma star, of course. This is a misprint. Hmm. Uh, one, okay, but assuming this on sigma sigma star and not on sigma, one can relax uh, uh, the assumptions. Well, I will correct later. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, so uh, there are uh, several, however, several problems if one wants to. Uh, uh, do this for a general classical diffusion. The first problem is uh, here uh, the domain. Here I considered R RD, the, the whole space. If one considers a domain with boundaries, as it was the case of uh, Professor Holevo's talk this morning with uh, the boundary at zero, then uh, there are several problems. It is hard to match uh, the domains of L and its adjoint, and, uh, but uh, it works um, essentially only in the case when it has a, a reflection boundary condition. With other boundaries, one has a singularity. And moreover, if sigma is not invertible, so it becomes uh, uh, zero uh, somewhere inside the domain, again, one has the same problem because uh, uh, the elliptic uh, operator becomes degenerate and uh, mm, it is uh, uh, difficult to check all the uh, domain assumptions. Well, we have a special results, uh, uh, for example, for the Bessel process uh, almost 20 years ago uh, and recently we, we are trying to uh, study other special uh, classical diffusion processes. Okay. But anyway, this is another field uh, in which one can apply uh, semi-group uh, theory and uh, uh, go through several problems with generation of semi-groups essentially and good essential domains so as to be able to apply the approximation result. Uh, now, I would like to go uh, to the construction of the quantum stochastic process. So not only the semi-group, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, well, the whole process as a family of uh, homomorphism of certain star algebra. Well, first of all, as a um, motivation of what I'll try to do, well, here there's another misprint, of course. Uh, I consider the classical view uh, of the problem, so the commutative view. One has the, <coughs> the generator. Uh, if one considers uh, a stoc as uh, the, the stochastic process solving this stochastic differential equation driven by Brownian motions, of course, under 
regularity assumptions on uh, here um, covariances under it. By ETO formula, one finds that the differential of uh, a function of the process, this xt is the, the, the diffusion at time t, has this form. So it is generator applied to f times dt plus another martingale term, uh, which has zero mean. Therefore, one can, when one considers uh, the expectation, this disappears, and the expectation of f of xt is the semigroup applied to f uh, with a good initial condition. And as Luigi uh, explained this morning, uh, uh, the key for understanding uh, quantum Markov processes is this uh, uh, homomorphism formula that holds also for classical processes. Uh, so uh, the random variable xt defines a star homomorphism of algebras this jt, jt of f is f of xt. This is L infinity of the probability space. Uh, indeed, uh, 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 a cardio, uh, the definition of a quantum stochastic process given by a cardi Frigerio and Lewis was uh, the following. Uh, on a quantum stochastic process on V with values in B is uh, this uh, uh, algebra homom star algebra homomorphism. But uh, uh, the diffusion as uh, uh, many regular processes can be realized as a, a family of inner homomorphisms uh, through uh, uh, this uh, uh, implementation of uh, uh, through quantum, the quantum stochastic calculus introduced by Robin Hudson and Parsasarati. Uh, <coughs> so one solves uh, a quantum stochastic differential equation. These A and the A dagger are the creation, the noises are the creation and annihilation process by Hudson and Parthasarati, which are uh, in a heuristic way, uh, sort of, um, well, when you combine them in a clever way, uh, well, here there are too many daggers. This dagger should not be here. No, sorry. this should not be here. This is A, the other is A adjoint. One gets a family, uh, depending on theta in this case, of uh, classical Brownian motions. So the, all these random variables commute among uh, them with di at different times. But if one changes the theta, they do not. So in this way, there are a quantum Brownian motion. So, uh, uh, a bunch of classical Brownian motions that do not commute uh, each other. And uh, one can solve this stochastic differential equation. These LJs are operators in the Hilbert space H. These, a, these noises live in a, the Fox space. One can solve uh, the equation and get a unitary solution. Uh, in this way, one can form the homomorphism. This is, of course, uh, an inner homomorphism because it is implemented by uh, unitaries. And one has the quantum stochastic process. Well, the last. Uh, uh, yes, almost the last thing I wanted to say is about the uh, relationship with the classical diffusion process. Uh, so if one uh, 
thinks that the the homomorphism that we constructed now goes from algebra of bounded operators on the L2 space to algebra of bounded operators on L2 tensor, the Fox space, so the noises. And uh, the homomorphism has this form. Well, it turns out that due to the choice of uh, the operator cell, uh, and uh, also the operator G, the operator G, G was a minus one half sum S star J, L, J, and then the Hamiltonian. Uh, the choice done before, the Hamiltonian was this symmetric first order differential operator. It turns out that uh, when I apply the J, the homomorphism, to a multiplication operator by a function f, I get the multiplication operator by a function of xt. So in other words, one has this uh, embedding uh, uh, summarized in this diagram. So at the first row, at the first row one has the classical process. This L infinity turns out to be embedded here as an algebra of multiplication operators. One has this embedding here. And so in the uh, uh, lower row, one has the family of homomorphism corresponding to the quantum stochastic process that extends the classical diffusion process. Of course, one can go uh, on uh, and uh, since uh, uh, this morning we um, I remember uh, Robin Hudson, uh, I uh, would like to comment that this process that uh, one constructs through this operator cell K uh, and the H that appears only in the Limbladian here, it was called, uh, uh, was first studied by uh, Robin and a student uh, of him. And this process solves this quantum stochastic differential equation uh, driven by the noises of uh, the boson Fock quantum stochastic calculus. So one has not only the analogy at the level of the semigroup, but also the analogy at the level of the whole diffusion process solving a certain uh, stochastic differential equation. Uh, now, um, well, there's a considerable work on these uh, uh, classes of uh, sto stochastic equation that was done by uh, Martin, uh, Martin Lindsay, uh, Steve Wills, uh, and uh, uh, collaborators. But uh, now, uh, I uh, have no time. So I think that I, it's better to, um, uh, to conclude uh, here. The message uh, is that as in classical, uh, as in the study of classical Markov process, semi-group theory plays a major role and uh, I am uh, uh, glad that uh, it was uh, remembered now that uh, e the book of Etier and Kurz where these methods are really at work in the classical commutative case. Uh, because uh, these methods uh, can uh, also allow to construct a lot of uh, quantum Markov processes and uh, to, uh, uh, to work with them uh, with uh, essentially um, extensions of all this machinery that has been used on function spaces, but now one can work on an, an operator algebra. Uh, well, I, <coughs> if one, uh, well, uh, okay, let's forget references because I think my time is over. <laughs> but anyway, you can find uh, them everywhere. <laughs>
Thank you. Thanks a lot for your talk. Okay. Yes. So it's time for questions. Please. Finally, if you have references on the last slide, maybe you show just the last slide. Ah, no, well, they were, uh, no, no, the last slide was another example. <laughs> no, there, there, I had a few references at the beginning, but only some, uh, no, I removed them, sorry. <laughs> no problem, thank you. Great. So, further comments, questions, remarks? So I have a maybe a extremely naive question. So at the very beginning of your talk, you showed us the characterization of, uh, so assuming you have a uniformly continuous semigroup, you showed us a characterization of uh, complete positivity in terms of the generator. Now, if I have uh, only a weak star continuous semigroup, is there also a characterization of complete positivity? No. Uh, no. Well, indeed, uh, this uh, uh, it, it is a big open problem. Okay. Uh, in, the, in this sense, there is uh, uh, not a, a similar characterization. Uh, indeed, this morning, uh, Professor Oliver gave a counter uh, uh, a counter example of a non-standard form, but there are. Uh, um, uh, many, many counterexamples. There is a study of uh, uh, a classification of semigroups by type. Uh, there is type one, type two, type three, and these are essentially type one. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is not, uh, uh, this uh, formula does not, it is known that it does not hold in general. Uh, then there are some uh, um, sufficient conditions for getting a similar uh, formula. So in my opinion, the, the, the open problem would be uh, uh, formulated in a uh, mm, simpler way in this form. So give uh, sufficient conditions that guarantee that, guarantee that also in the weak star continuous case, plus some other condition, you have also a similar representation. Well, uh, one, uh, uh, there are uh, sufficient conditions uh, given, the first one was, I know is the one of Davis. If the semigroup has a pure invariant state, then you can find such a representation. Mm -hmm. Another one was uh, um, given uh, by Olevo in his paper, in a paper in 90 something, assuming essentially some uh, weak form of differentiability. In the sense that uh, these maps, uh, where are these maps? The map that uh, maps uh, A to TT of A is differentiable in some weak form, weak sense. Under this, you can somehow reconstruct uh, a similar uh, generator. Well, this condition was um, extended recently by uh, Andrew Lakis and others. It was discussed in, uh, in the quantum probability conference one, one or two years ago. Uh, but uh, um, perhaps there are other conditions uh, that perhaps are easier to uh, deal with uh, that uh, in the end uh, guarantee that you have this uh, nice and useful representation of the generator. Thank you very much. So further questions, please, further comments. Assuming everybody's tired from the long day. Yes, I guess so. <clears throat> Maybe let us wait a few more seconds in case that question comes up. <coughs> a 
Okay. So I think thank you. Uh, no further question then. Please let us thank the speaker for this wonderful talk once again. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all of you for attending today. So um, I think. Yes, now we have a coffee break and a photo session. Great. Yeah. Great. So this is uh, an important thing too. So please, uh, please all switch on your cameras.